Yes, I know he was a drama queen for a whole week and supplied the whole League community with a lot of content in the build up to Worlds, but I actually learned a lot from watching this guy. I have to tell you guys, my play has dramatically improved almost overnight from him over the course of his content spree. It reminded me a lot of old League of Legends days where you can actually gain something from watching streams instead of watching some bald ass gnome yell into the mic for 10 hours straight. So in this video, we'll discuss the viability of watching streams for improvement, qualities that educational streamers should have, and what a good streamer can actually do for you. If you guys are new here, my name is Rabies and I make climbing content for the average solo queue enthusiast. If you guys are interested in anything from climbing out of low elo, understanding the ladder, esports discussions, or wrestling down addiction, make sure to like and subscribe. So, how useful are watching streams for improving at League? There are a lot of four fun streamers out there who aren't necessarily going to educate you on the game or help you get better at any specific facets. It's good content, like watching your favorite TV show, but it does little for making you better. You might just end up wasting away hours addicted to your screen over some fake, over the top ass personalities, using the fake drama they produce to make it through your boring ass lives. Let me get this out of the way first. I don't even think watching streamers is even the best way to improve at this game. It's extremely generic content and even if you manage to niche it down, there's no guarantee it's going to solve the problems that you're specifically struggling with in your games. The best way to do that is to get one-on-one -on -one coaching which I offer in my discord. If you don't want to do that, the next best thing to do is to watch YouTube videos. The best kind of YouTube videos to watch are the ones explaining the fundamentals of the game. This is because you'll get the most bang for your buck. By learning the fundamentals, you'll be able to see the game in a much more holistic, nuanced light and that type of knowledge is one of the biggest pillars to climbing. The second best kind of content to improve on is champion guides. Champion guides are essential because without intimate knowledge on how to play your champ, all the fundamentals in the world aren't really going to do shit for you. I'd even argue that it might be better to learn your champion first, complete with all the fundamental skills that you need to be good at at that champ because like I've said a million times on the channel, champion mastery is one of the most important factors to climbing. It's better to get a textbook education on the game and or your champion before you start dabbling in learning from live streams. This is because YouTube videos provide structured formats where you get everything from A to Z in a clear and hopefully concise manner. A good champion guide shouldn't really leave any holes in his explanations and should provide at least a basic blueprint to pick up and play the champion from the moment you finish a video. Live streams on the other hand is a bit of a free-for-all. There are much more lessons to be learned but instead of being sat down and instructed in a structured way, it's on you to figure out what lessons are good or bad. Sure there are really good streamers like Whippo who can articulate it in real time but that's the vast, vast minority. If you don't have an intermediate understanding of the game and what things you should really be improving on for you specifically, then watching streams can be a nice experience but it's not really the most efficient use of your time. Now that you know the viability of watching streams, how do you decide what makes a good streamer or not? All streamers have two categories that they're graded by, education and entertainment. Ideally streamers would have both but this isn't necessarily the case. Let's take Tyler1 for example. There's no doubt Tyler is certainly in entertaining, even though people have gotten used to the formula by now. However, despite his unique experience of getting challenger across all five roles, Tyler isn't necessarily an educational streamer. He definitely plays up the entertainment side of things and it's on you to parse through all the streaming, yelling, inting and blaming teammates in order to get to the root learnings hidden deep within all of it. In this essence, I would put Tyler as someone who is entertaining but not exceedingly educational. Perhaps if you play the same champions that he does, or if you're advanced enough where you can figure out what he's doing correctly that you can emulate in your own games. But otherwise, it isn't necessarily the best use of your time, especially considering the tilting, screaming and yelling might reinforce some other bad habits in your own gameplay, or simply that it might not even be palatable to you if you're not some fucking 14 year old skinny freeloading incel. Let's take a look at another type. Pobutter is a streamer that I would classify as educational, but not necessarily entertaining. He's quite good at explaining his thought processes in a clear and concise manner, and being an ex-pro makes him a very good solo queue player off of sheer talent alone, but the personality simply doesn't do it for me. I always found it like a little bit too milk toast and soy boy, even though he had a lot of useful information to give out and was very good at the game, I really couldn't fuck with his personality too much. At the end of the day guys, it's somewhat subjective. Personality is a very finicky thing to try and nail down. Depending on who you are and what stage of life you're in, you might find some streamers more palatable than others. Now let's get into the juice of the video. What things can you hope to learn through watching streams? In short, the answer is a different perspective. The best streamers offer you a different perspective to look at the game through, often a better one, and they're engaging enough where you can watch them enough to fully integrate that perspective into your own gameplay. Let's take Bwipo for example. Bwipo is hilariously aggressive and he's been that way since his debut in season 8. I know because I've been watching Homeboy for the past 7 years since his legendary rookie year where he made it to world finals. Normally I wouldn't watch people like him, I'm more of a Bjergsen style player where I like to have control and make precise plays over rampant aggression. However, like I explained earlier in the video, having engaging content makes it very easy to watch, even if it's things you wouldn't really fuck with normally. Bwipo, similar to Keijo, is extremely articulate. He has a very unique accent because of the multitude of languages 
language as he speaks, and he's able to convey his thoughts and feelings in a very concise and digestible manner. He can also convey his thoughts in the middle of playing the game, which is something that I argue he even does better than Kajol at this point. When Whippo goes for those asininely aggressive plays, he breaks it down in excruciating detail what he was doing and why he thought it was a good look. Watching a streamer like him can help me break out of my own comfort zone and go for more plays. It shows me what's possible within the game and just how much I can get away with and still end up winning. Since watching Whippo, my risk tolerance has shot up dramatically. Not only do I go for more fights that I wouldn't have had otherwise, but I don't get as tilted as I used to after dying once or twice. I have a better eye for what fight looks good and I've gotten better at tracking key enemy resources such as summoners or ults. Cause lord knows Whippo can die like 10 times in 10 minutes and be just as motivated to win the game on the 11th minute. Whatever streamer you decide to watch, make sure that they're very articulate and can explain their thought processes behind why they do what they do. This is very important if you want to reverse engineer their playstyle. Blindly copying can work but knowing why something is being done is a lot better in the long run. Watching a streamer whose strengths are your main weak points is honestly such a boost. It forcefully opens your worldview into an entirely new paradigm and you begin to see the game through a much more complete lens. Now yes, I am still a very control heavy player that doesn't really go for every single play I see. I haven't really changed that aspect of my game but through exposing myself to Whippo's rampant aggression and having him explain why he's doing what he's doing makes me a lot more dynamic in my decision making and now I'm taking good aggressive plays that I wasn't a week ago and it's been showing in my rank. I'm a very rigid player and that rigidity helps me hammer home the fundamentals that help me climb in the long term. However, having an eye for catching the enemy slipping is a very useful skill to have especially for me whose strengths lie in the opposite side of the spectrum. I hope that you guys can find this new information to find yourself a streamer that runs counter to whatever your strengths are. Whether it's stylistically, mechanically, or simply learning a new champion in more detail, having a high elo player that constantly challenges your idea of where the limits are and explain why they're breaking them is an extremely invaluable thing that will supercharge your climb. If you guys want to hit me up for more details and personalized coaching, join my discord. I linked two videos that might be helpful from here. The one on the left has to do with specifics on the rank ladder. It's useful to watch this one because if you can find a streamer that's particularly good at any of these things, you'll hit the jackpot. On the right, it's my old video on champion mastery. That's all from me in this video guys, I'll see y'all in the next one. And remember, anyone can get diamond.